Welcome to my channel, Custom Scrapbook Design by Christy Stubbs. So today I am bringing you a mini album tutorial and I have based the tutorial off of these two albums. So <clears throat> I'm going to reference this album mainly. We're going to build it just like this, only the size is going to be this one. So this My Best Friend book actually measures six by six. And this Love My Dog one measures six and a half by six and a half. And I just feel like you get a little bit more room for photos. And it makes the paper come out a little more evenly as far as for the patterned paper with less waste. So I'm going to build it exactly like this book. However, going this six and a half by six and a half. So I will link both walkthrough videos for you guys below of both of these albums. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I've done a little bit of the work ahead of time just to kind of save some time on the video as far as for building the actual album itself. So to get started, you're gonna need some medium to lightweight chipboard and you're going to need two pieces that measure six and a half by six and a half and I've gone ahead and already put double sided tape all across the back side of both of those pieces and then you're also going to need the spine piece that measures two by six and a half and I've already put the double stick tape on the back of that as well. And to cover those to build the frame, you need two pieces of paper cardstock that measure eight and a half by eight and a half. So when you're doing this, you basically need your cardstock two inches bigger than the actual chipboard. And then I've got one inch rulers, spacers here that I'm going to put down. And then when, as you can see, when I put my chipboard down, then I have one inch all the way around this um, chipboard. So I've got one, one inch of cardstock all the way around there. So we're going to go ahead and peel off. I've already burnished all of this down. So we're just going to take and peel off the back of this tape. And then you're going to turn that over. I guess it doesn't really matter if it's sideways, upside down, whatever. And you're going to put that piece down and then we're going to burnish that as soon as I get the next piece down. So here's my other eight and a half by eight and a half. We're going to go ahead and peel the sticky off and then we're going to do that on the spine as well. Now on the spine, we actually are going to have a little bit different scenario on the spine. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. On the side, we're going to get an inch and a half, and on the top, we're going to get an inch. Spine measures two by six and a half. We need a piece of cardstock that measures five by eight and a half. So five by eight and a half is going to be our spine. Okay, and then with that done, you're going to take and burnish 
that paper cardstock to the tape really well. So you just want to take a burnishing tool of some sort and just really give that a good press because you really want to make sure you have a good adhesion between the cardstock and the chipboard. Okay, then the next thing I'm gonna show you is we're gonna wrap this. So the easiest way to do that is just to fold that over and then you can take a scoring tool, a burnishing tool, whichever you have and just give that a nice crease. And you're gonna go all the way around with that and you're gonna do that to the cover and the back cover and then also the spine. You're gonna just repeat this process. And then you're gonna take and cut out that little square that you've got there. And I just kind of quickly cut these out and I'm gonna show you how I go back and actually trim these just a little bit better. I just try and get the bulk of that out. And I don't cut too close to the corner because I'm gonna show you how you actually go back and get a tighter cut. So to do that, I'm gonna cut this edge here and I'm gonna fold this one in and then you're gonna put your scissors right up at that corner. And you're gonna go all the way around and do the four corners. And I'm just spinning it clockwise so you can go however you want. And then I'm gonna flip it over to do the other side. And I'm gonna just spin that around clockwise again and hit all four. And then you've got those trimmed nicely. So I will do the back cover the same exact way. And then let's just do the spine together because the spine, we're gonna do that just just slightly different and I just want to show you what it is I do a little different there. So again you're just going to fold that paper over, burnish it, give it a nice good crease and then the only thing I do different on the spine is I like to uh, just give it a very very slight trim at just a little bit of an angle because you really want to make sure that your chipboard is covered on that corner. So you want to just give it a very, very slight angle. I feel like the um, inside and back cover, it's not necessarily quite as important because you end up covering all of that anyway, but your spine piece if you cut it at too sharp of an angle, you're gonna have some of that chipboard poking through either at the top or the bottom of your spine. So that's the only thing that I do slightly different there is just be real careful to give it just a very slight angle for that trim. All right, and then I'm gonna get the back piece cut and ready to go. And then we'll come back and put all of this together. Okay, so I've gone ahead and wrapped the first cover. And I just wanna give you a little hint on something that I do. Sometimes my um, corners end up having like a really sharp edge on them and I just take and kind of very gently rock it on the surface and it takes away that sharp corner. It just kind of presses that down. So to do those, I've already gone ahead and put a thin piece of double-sided tape on the outside edge of those 
And the reason I use tape and glue is because I like to put a bead of glue right up against the chipboard. And then I also just run a little line of it. But I fold it over with a burnishing tool and then I go straight over and that tape holds that in place while I press and squeeze the glue that I put under there all the way across there. And sometimes I have a little bit that spills out. I try not to use too much. Too much glue is never a good thing with paper. So it's kind of a fine, fine line. You want to make sure you have enough though that it's going to hold it really good. So again, I just bend it tight up against that chipboard press it over, and then start working my way across. So we'll finish up this one. So both the front and the back cover are done the same way. And then the spine is gonna be done just slightly different. And I'll show you what we need to do there in one moment. We'll get this last side hooked, put our glue down, that last little bit of backing off. Press that down nice and tight. You want to be sure and burnish that real good. Make sure all those pieces are down nice and tight. Again, I've got kind of a sharp corner there, maybe one there. I just kind of roll it and it softens that corner. So we've got our front and our back piece. Now we've got our spine piece and I've already put the tape just on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna do those two pieces exactly like we just did the cover. And we're just gonna do the top and the bottom that way and we're going to do something slightly different on the side and I'm going to show you that here momentarily. But this right here is why you really don't want a tight super sharp angle. You want to try and cover as much of that cardstock as you can. So now with this size of an album this is what I find works for me. You might have something that works a little bit better for you. But before we do anything, you're gonna take this. We had folded the paper like so. Now you wanna just go ahead and fold it the other way and give it a good uh, burnish. We wanna do that on both sides. And what we're doing is just kinda working the fibers in the paper so that they will bend easily, okay? So we've given those a good bend, and then we're going to take our scoreboard and we're going to put this book together. I use my scoreboard because I feel like it helps me kind of keep things straight with the smaller albums. If you go a little bit bigger, um, you, may, you may not be able to use your scoreboard. Looks like I got some ink on that corner already. Okay, so I like to place this down and I like to give, I'm not sure you can see it, but the fold in the paper is right here. So I have got probably not quite a quarter of an inch and I just wanna make sure that that line is straight and then I hold down the spine and I lift that piece up out of the way I run a bead of glue as close to that edge as I can. And then you're just gonna fill in the rest. And then I take that piece and I line it up at the top and lay it down. Give it a good press. Maybe even burnish it, flip it over, 
and then really work that down. And then I just repeat that for the other side. So we just get that lined up. Make sure this is lined, your uh, cover piece is lined up squarely in the corner. Try and give it the same amount of space. Now this should all be lined up nice and straight. This is gonna help you keep your book straight. I've got it in the same spot, so I'm just gonna set that to the side. Grab my glue bottle. And run a bead as close to where that edge is gonna be. And you try not to go any further because you really don't want any glue squishing out at the spine. And then I line that back up at the top and on the bottom, set it in place, hold it down while I burnish it, flip it over, give it another good burnish on the inside, wipe any excess glue, and then we're going to leave it flat and set it to the side. Now, the next thing we're going to do is the spine. So I've got a two inch spine on this book and I'm going to put four pages in there. So my binding for the spine requires an inch of paper. I've got four pages, that's going to be four inches. So I'll have a half an inch in between those four pages. So I have three half inch spaces. So that makes it five and a half inches wide. So we need a piece. The book is six and a half. We're going to make the pages slightly smaller to make sure they stay within the inside of the album. So we're going to go six by five and a half. And then you're going to take and score that at every half inch. So you're going to score at a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and then again at five. Now I like to flip that straight over and then I just go back through and score it again. This is a real important piece of putting your album together is getting your binding folded straight. And I just find that if I score it on both sides, it has a tendency to fold where I want it to just a little bit easier. So this, cause this seems to be something that I always tend to kind of struggle to get super straight. So that first score line, we're going to fold that over, give it a burnish, and that's going to be your first binding that holds your first page. So we're going to go ahead and fan fold that over okay and then this is going to be flat this is what's going to glue into your book so you want to fold your next fold is going to go up so sometimes it works better to flatten that out and then fold And if anyone's got any tricks on this, for some reason, I swear I always get these just slightly crooked. I tend to force the paper a little more maybe than I should. Okay, so now we've got our second binding and that's gonna be our first. And those are what your pages are gonna adhere to. So again, let's fold that. I don't have that one burnished yet, so we're going to go ahead and burnish that. Now we want that one to stay flat, and then this page has to come up, so we want to fold that up. And we're going 
and I'd give it a nice, good, crisp line. And then we're gonna fold the mountain down. And there's our third page. Okay. So we haven't burnished this one down yet. And then we want that piece to be flat, so we want to bring this next one up. And then we want to fold it over. And then we've got our binding that will hold four pages. So we're going to take and glue these mountain pieces together. So you're going to run some glue in each one of those four mountain pieces and glue that together. So I just find, if I turn that over, put your glue in there, and then just start giving it a good burnish. And I, again, always tend to use just a little too much glue and end up squishing it out at the top and bottom a little bit. So there's the first one. We're gonna glue this next one together. is done. So we're going to set that to the side because we don't need that for a little bit and we're going to work on the inside of our album. So we've got, this should be good and dry by now. Fold your book, you can see your nice binding. book is nice and square. All right, so now I've got a piece of cardstock that measures six and three eighths by 12. And we're gonna cover the majority of this chipboard. It's not gonna reach all the way. We would have to piece two pieces together. But the main thing that we wanna cover is just across this spine. We wanna cover this joint. Remember when I talked about not cutting that too deep? Because this is what's gonna cover it. So, I do use the double stick tape on that. Again, because I, it doesn't tend to bubble. Where the glue, I think you can tend to get some bubbling and some lifting. So I do use the tape on this. And I just pull all that off. And then I eyeball it to try and get it as centered as possible. Definitely top to bottom side to side isn't nearly as important but you want to make sure you're not hanging over the edge on either the top or the bottom okay so now that's down really good i take and really burnish that middle down and then i run a good burnish on both sides and then you can take a flat tool Either this, I do have um, a We Are Memories Keeper, which is actually the full size. It's a little thicker. I like to use this one since it's a little thinner. But then we're gonna start working that paper. And I get as close to this edge, you can feel the chipboard underneath uh, that spine piece. And I start folding and bending 
as close to the spine as possible. Now I, you notice I didn't bend it all the way yet. We're going to take our time and gently kind of work this. We want to just break down the fibers in that paper so that it'll bend more easily. And so you just want to keep working it back and forth without going all the way through. And you're wanting to, and that did work out well, you're wanting to make sure when you're doing that, you're doing it straight so that when you bend that book over, it still lines up. If it doesn't line up, you've bent this crooked. So this is a real important step that you want to take your time doing, press up against that spine, and sometimes, even then, you can end up slightly crooked. But this one worked out perfectly. So now you've got this all covered. Now that right there is going to be where your binding goes. And you're going to just center that on the spine piece. Top to bottom, you should have about a quarter of an inch gap on top and on the bottom, and then about the same on the sides. Now this is where if your folds haven't been perfect, which my fold here is not perfect, your pages can end up a little bit crooked if you're not careful. So we'll have to take a little extra effort on that back page to make sure it stays straight. But we're not going to hook this down until you put your patterned paper on the spine. If that's important to you. If you want that to be all gray, you can have it be all gray. It would hide if it's not perfectly centered. Once you put the paper on there, it definitely does show up a little bit more. So we're going to set this to the side because we're done basically with this for a while. And we're going to move on to the pages. So our book is going to have four pages in there. And so I have already pre-cut four pieces and they measure six by 12. And we're going to pull the scoreboard out again and we're going to score all four of those at six inches. We're just going to score those in half and then we're going to fold those in half. Now I did both books different and I'm going to try and do this one again with decorating the pages before I put them in the book. I kind of felt like I had less bending of all of the extra pieces when I did it that way. When you're putting the patterned paper on it was a little bit easier but you have to be real careful in the way that you put your patterned papers on. So. The other thing that I did when I did the other book that way that was helpful was label them. So we'll label them after we fold them. We're going to just fold them, give them a good burnish on that fold, and we're going to do one, and I'm going to do an arrow for the top so that everything stays going the right direction. This is going to be page two. And there's the arrow for the top again. And I am doing this in pencil. It's not a big deal. It's going to be covered with patterned paper as long as your pattern paper is dark enough to cover that. Otherwise you can erase it. And then fold that one so that the writing's on the outside. I don't really want it on the inside of the pocket. You would never see it, but just in case. There's page four and the arrow. So we've got the start of our four pages for inside the album. So we're going to need some more pieces here and I'm just going to go through them and we're going to go ahead and score them as we need to. So the first two pieces 
are you need two that measure two and an eighth by two and an eighth. And we're just gonna set those aside. Those are gonna be for some two by two cut aparts if your collection has them. If not, we're gonna create some. And then we've got two three and a half by four. And these are gonna be to hold the three by four cut aparts. So with the three and a half across the top, we're gonna score those at a half an inch. And you're gonna go ahead and do both of them. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do all of our scoring. Then these are gonna hold the four by sixes and we're gonna need to pick four by sixes that you can trim down to five and a quarter. So you need two pieces of your cardstock cut at four and a half by five and a half. And with the four and a half across the top, we're gonna score at a half an inch. Again, you want your four and a half across the top and we're gonna score at a half an inch. Okay, so those are ready to go. And then next, we need two pieces that measure five and a half by five. And with the five and a half across the top, we're gonna score that at a half inch. Again, with the five and a half, score at a half inch. And then we've got two pieces that measure six by five and a half. With the six across the top, we're gonna score at a half inch. Six across the top, score at a half an inch. All right, and then these are not necessarily to length. We may need to trim these. I, I don't have these, the length on these figured out, but currently they measure one and three eighths by six and a quarter. And with the six and a quarter across the top, I've already scored these at a half an inch. So we're gonna set those to the side. We'll trim those as needed for length. So on page one, We've got the front and the unlabeled side is your back. So we've got the front side. You're going to take one of the three and a half by four and we're gonna go ahead and fold that and burnish it. And we're gonna place it on the right side of the page. So I like to take my ruler and find the center and then we're going to go ahead and glue this down centering centering it on this side and placing it right on the edge of the page and then you want to just make sure you get that lined up right on the edge and then go ahead and burnish that down. Now this is where we're going to take some of our magnets as well. So you're going to need a package of magnets or I just ran out of them, but I ordered some magnets off Amazon and I will link those below, but they were really reasonably priced and they work really well. The only thing about these versus the other magnets that I um, normally use is they don't have any adhesive on them, but I just tape them down and then glue and they're working really well for me. But since I'm currently out of those, I'm going to use my other magnets and I will link these down below as well. You can get these on Amazon as well. Um, these ones are a little more pricey, so um, the fact that those other ones don't have adhesive, to me, for the price, 
is not that big of a deal. So I am going to place my first magnet down on this three by four flap. And I am going to, I'm trying to decide if I do one, I don't remember what I did in this other book. So let's just take a quick peek and see. Yep, I just did one. So we'll just place one. Now you wanna place it in far enough that you can get your paper to hook, uh, to glue down really well. So I glue my one magnet down or use the adhesive, whatever adhesive you're gonna use. And then I go ahead and attach it. Now if this didn't have adhesive on it, I would just stick a little glue on that and flip it over and then move the magnet to where that glue mark is. But we'll, it is easier when they have adhesive on them. Not gonna lie, I guess you pay for that. Um, convenience. All right, so that is the front of page one. Now in the other book, I did make the back of page four matched that. So we're gonna take the other cut apart and we're gonna fold that over, burnish it down, and we're basically just gonna repeat that process for this one. Okay, then I take and put this back in order so that everything stays nice and in order. And then we're gonna take our two that measure four and a half by five and a half. We're just gonna go ahead and fold those over, give them a good burnish. And then on the front of page two, at the top, so I'm gonna turn it upside down because that's easier for me. We're just gonna go ahead and attach that at the top side of the front of page two. And you could use your ruler and get that centered, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's pretty close side to side. and then we're gonna put some magnets on that. We're gonna go back and put magnets on that other three by four. I totally spaced doing that. We'll go back and do that here as soon as we put these magnets on. So for this one, I actually used two magnets. I think I'm gonna go back down to one. I think it'll be fine with just one. Um, in the other book, I did leave that four by six cut apart at um, six inches wide. I decided to narrow that up just a little bit for this for this one. And um, I think it just helps with the flow of the book a little bit better. So magnets are a bugger to get out of there. down on top. Pull that down and that's held in place. So that is the front of page two. I'm just going to go ahead and move our mark right there. So on the 
Let's add the magnet to this one here while we're at it. Okay, so on the back side of page three, we're going to take our other four and a half by five and a half. And in the other book, I matched that flap there. But for this one, I'm going to actually put it at the bottom of the page and have it flap down just for something a little different. So you can make your flaps go any direction that you want to. And I'm just kind of eyeballing to center, getting that right on the bottom, and then burnishing that down. And because we've got magnets, we don't have to worry about that flapping around. So we'll go ahead and put our magnets on there. Close that. Okay. So there's. Okay. I got interrupted, so I'm not sure what I was saying, except we are on the back of page three. Finish that up with the magnet. Now, on the back of page two and the front of page three, we're going to add. A double flap. So you're going to take one of your larger pieces, which is six and a half by five and a half, and one of your smaller pieces, that is five and a half by five. We're going to go ahead and fold those over and burnish them. And then we're going to just glue one right on top of the other. And you've got a quarter inch reveal on the top and bottom and a half an inch on the end. So we'll just glue that down and center it. And you can measure if you want to. I'm going to eyeball. It's going to be close enough for me. Go ahead and burnish that down really good. Make sure it's stuck. And then on the back of page two, we're going to glue that on the outside edge so it opens to the outside. Okay, so well, let's go ahead and glue that one down. And again, I'm going to eyeball. We've got a quarter inch reveal, top, bottom, one inch. on the end so it opens like so and that's the back of page two now we're going to repeat that process on the front of page three and on the front of page three we're going to put that on the outside edge so we're going to be putting that on the right hand side instead of the left hand side And we're going to glue that on here. And then once you're done with that, when the book is open to the back page two and the front of page three, 
you'll have these flaps that'll open like so. Okay, and then that's where these flaps are gonna come into play as well. So we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish that over. We're gonna leave these long. As you can see, they go all the way to the edge. We're gonna end up trimming that down. I, I don't do that until um, later on, once we've got the book together is when we will actually do this piece. But we can glue the flap down for now. And you just wanna glue, glue it to the center here because what's gonna go on here is our little two by two piece. And what we wanna be able to do is center that. I, I like to center that two by two on top of this piece right here. And then we'll trim that so that it ends exactly where we need it to and we'll have a magnet and that'll hold everything together. So let's go ahead and glue this piece down. Now, if you want to use a ruler to make sure you get that placed exactly, feel free. I, I tend to like to eyeball it. I do have my ruler down and I'm gonna flip those flaps open so that they're out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue that down right on the edge there. And you wanna make sure you get that on there straight. Okay, so there's the back side of page two. Back side of page two. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue down this one as well. Center it, glue it down. Burnish it good, make sure it's good and stuck down. And bring those pieces back. And then there's the front of page three. So that is all of the extras that we're gonna add to our pages. And my magnets are all sticking. So, I will film covering all this, but I'm gonna just speed all of this up. So, but I'll give you a little tip as far as how I like to map my pages. So, my pages themselves measure six by six. So when I'm cutting my patterned paper, I will take an eighth of an inch off of there. So I would cut that paper five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And then this three by four piece, I would cut two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So that'll give you an idea like how I trim my paper to actually cover all of my pages. So I'm gonna do that in a little bit. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and cut some pockets for the inside front cover and the inside back cover. Now your pockets, you can decide which way you wanna do them. I'm gonna do them both going this direction. They'll be cut so that you can either put them this direction or this direction. So you can do that either way. And I'm gonna give you a couple tips on how I would put those together as well. So the cover itself measures six and a half wide. So I would just find, you should have a couple cutoffs from, I think I've used one of them, a couple cutoffs from when we cut our paper earlier. Here's another one. So this is six and a half, so you're gonna need a piece that measures seven and a half. Okay, so you're gonna want your piece to measure seven and a half, and this is just a cutoff that was left, and it is three and a half. So if we use the three and a half, you're gonna have a three inch pocket, which will work just fine. So this measures seven and a half by three. You're gonna take your score, 
and you're gonna score it at your scoreboard, score it at a half inch on the short side, half inch on the long side, and then one more time on the other short side, you're gonna score at a half. So go ahead and do both of those. You're gonna score it on three sides, and two of those sides are gonna be the short side regardless of which way you put your pocket on. Then you're gonna take your scissors and cut right where that score line intersects. And then you're also gonna take and just trim a little bit from the score line to the edge on those pockets. And then you're gonna fold and burnish on the score line. And you can see your three inch pocket. If that's too deep for you, you can make it a, sh uh, a narrower pocket and just trim that down if you want to. And then I just set it in place right along that edge. And then I do open this to make sure that you're not running into this joint here. And this pocket is perfect. Now, if you wanted to, you could put the pocket going this direction. So totally up to you which direction you would like to do that. So now I would cut the patterned paper and I start by putting this pocket on by just gluing the long section and fitting it. To the bottom, giving that a good burnish. And then I would cut the pattern paper to fit this. I'm just going to use this as an example. It's not the right size, but as an example, because I'm not going to um, take the time to cut one right now, but I would cut it to fit and then I would fold it up. And if it's exactly where it needs to be, I would glue that patterned paper right here and right here and then flip it over and then put all your glue on there and flip it over and then it would fit in there just perfectly. So that is how I actually put my patterned paper inside of a pocket on the front cover and the back cover. And I do run my paper all the way down to the bottom so that it covers this little joint right here, when you slide stuff in, it doesn't catch on anything. So I will film um, me doing this. It'll be just sped up quite a bit so that you can just watch the decorating of the album all sped up. So we'll just go ahead and do that other pocket. You cut it at the intersection of the scoring. And then again at the top, just slightly, and then you're gonna fold it and burnish, fold and burnish. Now, the other thing is, is once you fold this over, if you have any overlapping, you could trim that just a little bit more, and then you won't have any, any overlap on the back side of that. I've got just a little bit right here too. So I'm gonna trim that just a little bit more to make sure I don't have any overlap. And then I'm dry fitting it. And it looks like it fits good. So I just glue the bottom down. Get it right down at the bottom. burnish it good and we're ready to go so I've, I've told you how much I would trim the paper to do all of the um, matting of the pages and then I do the same with the uh, inside of the album now the outside of the album I always do it last so that I don't get it dirty so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting paper for my album pages and again, I will film this. It'll just be sped up 
And then once I get all of this covered, we'll put the spine, the binding, the book binding in and add our pages together. So I hope that uh, those directions were easy enough for you guys to follow along and I'll be back. to put together the pages inside the album. So I apparently got started without filming the first part of the first page. So you can kind of watch how I put together the first page. All of our pages are going to have that top pocket. So to assemble your page or put them on the hinge, you can see I'm going to glue on the side of the hinge that's closest to me. And then I'm actually going to put the page where I think it belongs. And you don't want it to sit totally down on that binding. You want to lift it up just ever so slightly. And then you want to bend your page over like I'm doing. Make sure it lines up with the other one. And once you get that all lined up, you want to burnish that hinge binding down onto your page. So once that is done, we'll move on to the next step. Um, you want to make sure that your page is very securely glued down. It looks like mine did not stick overly well, so I've added a little more glue to it. And I find I skipped finishing um, gluing that page and moved on to the next one. So we'll walk entirely through gluing down the next page. So again, I start with my page, open it up where the uh, page needs to be adhered to the binding, Start on one side and then put your page down, fold it over and make sure it lines up with your other pages. This is highly important because you can really get your pages kind of um, crooked in your book if not. Once they're set, hold that binding down to the page, make sure that glue is good and secure. You're going to add more glue to the other side of that hinge and then along the bottom side of your page. I use a scrap piece of paper to put underneath the page itself as you're burnishing just in case some glue happens to squish out and then you don't end up with any excess glue on the rest of your pages in your album. So you can kind of see how I assembled those two pages and I will let you watch the third one. I, We of course don't glue the top because we're going to leave those open for pockets, but if you don't want to have any pocket pages, you could glue the top of those shut as well. And it would just be, you know, less places for photo mats and that type of thing. So that's entirely up to you. I did want to have pockets at the top of all of all four of my pages for some extra spots for journaling or extra photos that maybe didn't make the main pages, but were still part of that same event. So we're just finishing up the fourth page here and then we're going to move on. Okay, so I went ahead and did the one flap and realized 
I made a small error and I will put a note of this at the beginning of the video. Do not cover this top page until you're ready to put this flap on because you need to put a magnet on there. And so I did put the magnet on there, but then I had to cover it. And so what I used to cover it was I had these um, four by four cut aparts from the collection and I just flipped it over and used the backside because it is part of the collection and it does coordinate with it. Uh, maybe I'm not totally in love with it. Um, I may even pull that up and just redo this blue floral paper on there because I really like the way that it looks better. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and do the other side and I'm going to show you kind of what my process was for doing this side. So, and I told you earlier in the video that this was going to be much longer than it needed to be. And part of that is, is because once you put all of this together, your center could end up being different. So, and I'm just eyeballing where the center is and it looks to be approximately right there. And so then what I did, and I'm sure there is an easier way to do this, but this is my way. So I just <clears throat> take and mark roughly where center is. And I'm going to cut a little bit to the right of that because I just want to attach this to this and then have the magnet on there. So I want to find center again and just by eyeballing it that appears to be where center is. And then what I'm going to do is take my pencil and just go right under this edge and mark that. So I've only got this little bit to attach it. And then I'd also stick a scrap piece of paper under there because you're going to have glue that squishes out and you don't want it to end up on your page. Although in this instance, we're probably going to be covering that anyway, so it would not be a big deal. But then we're going to try and eyeball that again. So we're going to press that down good. Clean up any of that glue that's squished out and then take a peek at it again and make sure you're centered side to side. It looks good. I'm going to pull that scrap piece in once again and burnish that down good. And then we're going to take and put a magnet on here. And the magnet does not have to be in the center. In fact, you probably don't want it to be because you're going to bend that two by two, trying to lift it all the time if you do it. So I actually put it, <laughs> we're going to have to put something between that base magnet. Wow, it's got a strong pull. Okay, maybe just a touch closer to the edge. Those magnets are strong. Okay, and now I've got it hooked down really good. And to help that even more, I am going to put a piece of tape across there and that should hold it in place. So now we want to get our magnet down on this base page. So I need to decide, and I think I will do that. I think what I will do is just cut another piece of this floral and put it on top. And over here, I'm going to pull this piece back up and cover it with a blue floral. I, 
I did that last night and I don't love it. So I'm going to switch that back so that I do like it. And like I said, I will at the beginning or somewhere near the beginning of the tutorial mention not to cover that piece until it's actually in the album. So, which magnet do I need? These can be a bugger to get out of this plastic. Okay. There we go. We're going to go ahead and peel that off. And we're going to put that down. And there's where that magnet needs to be. So then I just went ahead and cut. Well, let's see, did I cut that already? This is what happens when I go walk away and go to bed for the night. I forget what I've done. So let's take a peek. That's too narrow. So we need to cut a piece of this plaid to go here and then a piece to go here. And then we just need to pick another one of these two by twos to cover that. So I think we'll use that dragonfly there or butterfly there. So apparently I messed up and forgot to record or lost my recording of finishing the assembling of this album. So I'm just going to kind of talk you guys through it. So once we got the inside done, I did the outside cover. So since we're on that, we'll just go ahead and go over that. So I did double mat the cover. So I found a pink from my stash that I liked and added it and then used the floral on the top. And then for the cover, I did end up just using a couple of the tags that were a part of the collection and then some of the die cuts as well. And there are several of them that I did lift and put up on some foam tape, pulled some seam ribbing, seam binding out of my inventory and added that to the tags. And that is all I did. I kept it pretty basic, but I do want to tell you before you start to glue any of this down, you want to add your seam binding for the tie closure. So I usually leave myself a note on that cover that says seam binding so that I will remember to do that. So hopefully that'll help you as well. So then we get to the inside and I, I don't know what happened. I have a feeling I deleted this little bit of video trying to make some more room on my camera memory. So I apologize for that. But on this inside pocket, on the inside cover, I did take one of the four by fours and matted it on the paper that I used for the base. And then I just glued that on top of this pocket just to kind of add another little dimension to that pocket. I did use some of the die cuts there, have a couple more of the tags, couple of the journaling tags as well and those are all just tucked back behind that pocket and then the rest of this should seem pretty familiar to you guys but we've got this magnetized down I did add a couple of the journaling pieces right there magnet holds it there with what pieces of paper I had left I just cut random size mats so you can either do that or not I did use another one of the two by twos and only glued the top bottom, maybe quarter of it down, leaving that as a tuck spot for the photo mat. Did add a sticker. It says all smiles from the sticker sheet. This two by two says love where I am. And then the four by six that we had trimmed down is here. It's magnetized down. And then up here, I did add one of the die cut pieces and I only glued half of it down leaving it a tuck spot 
for another one of the scraps that I used and just rounded the corners. I do have the sticker beautiful down here. And then I did also add um, some strips of paper in between the bindings. And then we've got our matching little flip outs here. I did add um, die cuts to this piece. And these are both magnetized. And they pop open this way. And I left them very plain. There is a sticker here that says Everyday Moments. I just wanted to leave lots of room for adding photos. So by adding a bunch of stuff to it, it kind of limit, limits what you can put in the album. And I didn't want to do that. So again, this side's fairly plain. There's a Live Large sticker there magnetize shut then the four by six on the back side of this one which actually measures four by five and a half I've just got a die cut at the bottom here and then the last page I duplicated that two by two only halfway glued down to keep that as a tuck spot for a photo mat and then on the back side we've got the little three by four cut apart that flips out the back pocket, I just added another journaling um, box and a couple of the die cuts there. And then I also added a bunch of the tags in the pocket there. And in addition to that, remember how we didn't glue the top down? All of these are pockets. So I did take the scrap pieces again and just kind of pieced them together on some of the scrap gray pieces that I had. And just made some really nice spots for either journaling or adding more photos. And each one of these pockets has a photo mat. I did have some scraps that were big enough to cover the entire piece. And then others, I just kind of pieced it all together to so that I wouldn't have to get a new full 12 by 12 piece of paper to cover these. I just tried to use up uh, as many of the scraps as I possibly could. So that is the final walkthrough of our six and a half by six and a half album. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, sometimes I think I'm being clear with my instructions and uh, maybe I'm not being. So if you do have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any of them for you. I really appreciate you sticking with it until the end. And if you do happen to make this album, I would absolutely love to see what you create with this tutorial as well. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you want more uh, scrapbooking mini album tips, please join my private Facebook group, Create with Christy. And um, there's going to be a lot more stuff going on there in the new, near future. Again, all of the products are available on my website. I will link all of those below as well. And the magnets that I used in the album as well. So I hope you all have a fabulous day and enjoy making an album yourself. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.